Hi gang! In this video, we're going to talk about how to add a cast shadow to one of your illustrations. But before I get started, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment on my videos if you find them helpful. All right, let's get started. I've got an illustration here in Photoshop, and you can see it's made up of numerous layers. I can't just copy and paste it into a new file because I'll only get one of the layers. So in order to merge everything together without losing my layers, because I might want to go back to them and edit in the future. For instance, my top layer, maybe I'd want to change the color from red to a golden color, and if I merge the entire file, I won't have that available to me in the future. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to go down to the bottom and turn off my background layer so I don't have to deal with editing it out in the future. Now I can go up to my very top layer and select it. With it selected, I'm going to use my favorite keyboard shortcut, Control alt shift e or Command alt shift e if you're on a Mac. And what that did was make a merged copy. So this is a new layer put on top of all my other layers, and it's a copy of everything together. So I've got this merged layer that I can turn everything else off uh, and without having to worry about messing up my layers. So if I save this file, I'll still have all my layers if I need to edit in the future. So now I can take my marquee, select my girl, copy her, which is Control C or Command C, and now we're going to make a new page to lay her out. So I'll go up to File, New, and I always go to Print to make sure the resolution is at 300. I'm going to use a tabloid size for this, and I'm going to set the tabloid to Landscape and click Create. So here's my new page. Let's add a background first. I'm going to keep this very neutral, so I'm going to select a very light gray. And for the background color, I'm going to select a gray that's just a little bit darker. I want to keep it pretty monochromatic. We're going to grab the gradient tool. Hold down the shift key and just drag straight from the top to the bottom of my page to add a nice soft gradient. Now it is hard to see the two different colors, but that's okay. We're going to do a little magic. I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it on top of the new layer icon so I have two. And then I can control or command T to transform. And if you're in an older version of Photoshop, you can just click and drag straight down. But if you're in the newest version of Photoshop, you're going to need to hold the shift key when you drag in order to squish this. And basically what I just did, we'll click the little check mark, was create a horizon line so that my girl can be standing on the ground instead of floating in midair. Since I've already copied her, I can control or command V in order to paste her on this page. And now you can see without this, she's floating. But with the horizon line I created, she's actually grounded. And that's going to give us a place to add our drop shadow. I'm going to move her over a little bit. We'll call this girl. And we're going to make a new layer. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to call the new layer shadow. Now, it eventually needs to be behind the girl. But we're going to work with it on top just so I can make it a little easier to show you exactly what I'm doing. I want to color her black. And a really easy way to do that is to click this icon here, which locks the transparent pixels. Once they're locked, I can take a paintbrush, let's get some black here, and draw across my page. And you can see that it only adds color to the places that there was already some color, but anything that's transparent won't pick up color. And maybe if I turn off the background, that'll be a little easier to see. It won't paint here, but it will paint on her. So we'll get her painted black. And now we need to unlock the transparent pixel so we can do the next few steps. We need to lay the shadow down. And to do that, we're going to use the transform command. Control or Command T to transform. And then you can right click and select distort. We're going to grab the very top center handle and just drag your shadow down. You can make it as long or as short as your light source desires so, or requires. So I'm going to kind of drag it out this way and click Enter or Return on my keyboard. This part over here is not working, right? If this is a wall, then this part needs to climb up the wall. 
And it's very easy to fix that. We're going to grab the rectangle marquee, and I'm going to select the part that is above my ground. Now, an easy way to do this is to zoom in a little bit, Control plus to zoom in. And while I'm still in this marquee selection tool, I can click and move the marquee around. So I can make sure that I have it placed in the exact place that I want it, which is going to be right there. Let me zoom back out. And now we're going to transform again. Control or Command T for transform. Right click. Again, we're going to select distort. And now you can drag this up the wall. And then click OK. Now we have to remove the marching ants, which is deselect, Control or Command D. And we can finish up the shadow. As I said before, the shadow has to go behind, right? So we'll just drag the shadow layer below the layer with my girl on it. I'm going to switch to my Move tool. And let's make sure that the shadow is placed so it's coming from her feet properly. Right? We don't want it down here or up here too far. So we just want to make sure it's hitting the right place. Now we've got a big black shadow, which is really not what a shadow should look like. So let's fix this. Shadow generally has soft edges. And to do that, we can blur this. So let's go up to Filter, Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. It's going to open this window. And you can click in the window and move around in order to find your, um, your shadow. And you can click on the magnifying glass over here to zoom out a little bit. If you turn on preview, you can see the changes happening on your page. So I can make it really, really blurry like this, or just minimally blurry. I like it sort of somewhere in between. That feels about right to me. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to click OK. Now our shadow is way too dark. So I'm going to fix that by going up to my opacity in the Layers panel, and I'm going to slide that lower until I'm happy with the way it looks. Now remember, the point of a shadow isn't to overwhelm your illustration and draw attention to itself. It's just to ground your, your girl. So I'm going to keep this pretty low. I usually stick within the 20 to 30% range. So it adds to my illustration without pulling focus from the main point of my illustration. Now you have a soft, fuzzy, less intense shadow. There is one more step, though. Shadows generally are darker right where they start, and they get softer and fade out as they get farther away from the object that's casting them. We're going to do that, and it's really pretty easy. I'm going to activate the shadow layer. And then I'm going to add something called a layer mask. You can find that at the bottom of the layers panel. And it's this little icon here that kind of looks like a camera. If I click on it, it adds a totally white layer mask. Now, the way a layer mask works is if you paint on it with black, it blocks things or hides them. If you paint with white on a layer mask, it restores them. It's a really nice way to erase in a non-destructive way. So we're going to use this in order to fade out our shadow. Let me just make sure that I paint with white over everything. Actually, it probably doesn't really matter, because we're going to add a gradient. And we're going to add a gradient that goes from white to black. So white meaning we see the image, and black meaning it blocks the image. The gradient tool is right here. It's a rectangle with a little gradient in it. I'm going to click on it. And this time, I'm going to click and drag diagonally from the start of the drop shadow up toward the end of the drop shadow, and then let go. And you can see now that my shadow is stronger at the bottom and fades out as it gets toward the end. So that is how to add a cast shadow to one of your illustrations. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, please, once again, like, share, and comment on my videos. And I'll see you again in the next video.